Locke Meredith. I'd like to invite you to join me on the next Legal Lines where my guest is John Schroeder. He is the treasurer for the state of Louisiana, the entire state. He's going to talk to us about unclaimed property. Guess what, folks? That could be your money. He tells us how you can get that money. It's into the millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. He'll give you the website, phone number, and he'll tell you how you can get it. He's also going to talk to us about ESG, which are restrictions on the type of investments that he's not going to accept for the state of Louisiana. Finally, the Bonding Commission. So join us on the next Legal Lines with State Treasurer John Schroeder. Lockmere to Sean Fagan and Associates has served our community by airing Legal Lines, a community educational program for 18 years weekly to Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas. Watch Legal Lines at LockMeredith.com or Cox Channel 1004. Hi, I'm Sean Fagan of Lock Merida, Sean Fagan & Associates. When insurance companies have been unfair, we have never been afraid to go to trial. Fighting hard to protect your rights, we never settle a case out of convenience. We only settle when it's right for you. Whether you hire us at all, give us a call. Hello, welcome to Legal Lines. I'm Lock Meredith. I'm very pleased to have back on the show John Schroeder, who is the secretary, or the treasurer rather, for the entire state of Louisiana. John, it's great to see you again. Nice to see you. Look forward to kind of yes, sir. catching up on where, where we've been, where we are. So yeah. quickly give folks a, a, just kind of a quick history on yourself. <clears throat> I know you were uh, in the state capitol as a legislator mm -hmm. uh, representing the Covington area. Tell folks kind of quickly. Uh, yeah, real quick. You know, I, I tell people I had two careers, and both I've loved. Uh, you know, I, I, I always wanted to be in law enforcement at a high level, former CID agent. I was in military intelligence uh, in the infantry in the Army at the 101st Airborne Division. Um, That's the big boys. Yeah, right six there. and a half years. I had a real serious eye injury that brought me back to Louisiana. My retina hemorrhage when I was in my late 20s and um, came back, got into business, and, and eventually um, my first run um, didn't work out the way I wanted, and I w got back into law enforcement. Learning curve. And, and as my father would say. And, um, but um, I took a job in Ascension Parish um, working undercover narcotics. And I, back then they had, and I'm going back a long way now, I'm 60, almost 62. I worked on a, um, on a Louisiana Drug Task Force and, and out of Ascension Parish Sheriff's Office. So I did that for about 15, 16 months. And then I finally settled into what I thought I wanted to do for, for a living for the rest of my life. So I've had two careers, law enforcement, and then I've embarked in, in, into a pretty lengthy 30 plus year career in business uh, with my wife, with my father, and, um, and we've done a lot of things. I tell people I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little minnow in a big lake, but we've, we've done a lot of retail business, small mom and pop businesses. My wife and I have a pretty successful real estate um, company and a real estate portfolio. And um, you know, around 47 or so, the, the political opportunity came. It was not something that I always dreamt about, but I, I really, I miss serving, you know. And, and, and I, I explain to people, you know, yes, I was in law enforcement at a high level, but it wasn't just about putting people in jail. And it wasn't, I mean, I helped a lot uh, of people. That, that's like a ministry in my mind. It is. And I, I, let me tell you, I can't tell you how many families and, and people that I touched and I helped on a, on a nightly basis. And, you know, and, and, and to some extent that was taken away from me. So once I had some success in my business career and the opportunity arose and, you know, Ellie and I looked at it real hard and I got involved and I got in, involved deep. And um, if you want to help people, there's no better place to do it than politics, um, especially at the state level. And then I did that for almost 10 years. I, I, I represented uh, St. Tammany, um, West St. Tammany, the uh, east side of um, a large portion of Tangeville Parish, where when I moved over here to the North Shore from, from Metairie, um, I played football for a little while at, at the Southeast and met my wife and uh, became a resident of Tangeville Parish for almost 11 years. And um, I really loved the community, loved the people, but I was there when it was still very small. rural, very yep. small. And I've it's been discovered. Yeah, and I've watched that grow. So Ellie and I have probably logged in over 40 years now on the North Shore, and I've spent over half my life there. So it's, it's a home. wonderful place. And uh, we, I love serving. And then after almost 10 years in the legislature, um, then Treasurer Kennedy ran for 
uh, U.S. Senator, and um, and is a great one, I might add. Yeah, and and I, you know, the Treasury part of the, the the whole dynamics of the money side is what I enjoyed, and and having spent ten years as the budget hawk in yeah, that I building, say you get the real education. Yeah, I mean, all the businesses. I saw it expertise, but I saw it from the government side as well. So you marry those two experiences, the business side that I bring to the table. And then um, from a practical standpoint, and I tell people that all the time, government doesn't necessarily act like we do in the private sector because you have to survive in the private sector. If, if you make bad decisions and you don't survive, um, your business closes and, and you move, have to move on to the next thing. Well, government is going to survive. You know, yeah, well, they're of, not spending their money. You know, they're spending our money. It's sort of a unique <laughs> thing about government. It's not going anywhere. Right. You know, and it's almost on this c consistent growth pattern. So I have really have brought my expertise being a small business owner, coming for what I call the 85 percentile class, and just bring some of that common sense, street smarts things that we do in our day-to-day -day lives and implement those things in government. I'm here to tell you, those things do work. Let's, uh, let's kind of shift gears, tell folks what, what the good news that you want to yeah. tell them about, and it's called unclaimed property. Yeah. And you've done an amazing focus on this. This is people's money, Louisiana residents. Right. It's their money. They don't know it's their money. Right. And you're telling them how you can get it, and it's in the hundreds of millions. Yeah, it's probably easily the, 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 the thing I like the most about my job, because who wouldn't like giving away money? And I knew a little bit about it when I got there, but it's probably where I've used my business sense more than anywhere because in business, you have to advertise, you have to market, you have to be a little aggressive to go get more business because in business, you're either going forwards or backwards. There's no staying still. So I've treated the unclaimed property that way. I have a great staff. The director that has been uh, there, uh, worked for Kennedy, worked for me, has been got like 35 years of experience, and she is like the unclaimed property guru in the United States. What's not her name? Just I Louisiana. remember reading it. Uh, yeah, it's Kitty the, LaBelle. Yeah, and, amazing uh, stuff. Fantastic job, and, and let me tell you, she's been very open to new ideas. Even though she's been around a long time, sort of set in the ways, you know, we've, we've gelled very well over the last five years, which I just hit my fifth anniversary, but we really brought some technology to the table, but we made it an investment. You know, and it's hard for um, guys, even when I was in the legislature, you know, they don't like seeing government spend money. They want to see government spend less. But this program's unique. This program was created to collect these monies and then return it to the owners because it doesn't belong to the taxpayers of Louisiana. Each dollar has a name to it. The real, the real work is finding that person and, and where's that person at, you know, but we have so almost this a... Is like what, I saw it described as lost money. People have this money out there. It's theirs. It's been lost. Some of them don't even know they've lost the right. money, and they just need to know how to access it. And you've imp implemented all these programs yeah. and methodologies it's about to make a, it happen. It's right? about a billion dollars now on paper, and uh, one in six people, one in six in in this state have money 17%. in this program. And it's amazing. We probably average about 175 claims a day. Um, but when we advertise and we, and we invest some effort, uh, like yesterday, we, did, it, we a, did a deal with a local TV station. Of course, I had to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning <laughs> to do it. But we went from doing 175 claims yesterday, we're probably going to hit almost 3,000. And it's probably going to be close to $100,000 in one day. And I remember did. reading also that the, the highest amount claimed was in the millions. Yeah, 2.3 million so far. Incredible. <laughs> But look, we have some unbelievable stories, but we were, we were named number one program in the country last year. Huge success. Uh, just unbelievable numbers. We've increased by 630%. We were averaging about 30,000 or 30 million a year last year. We did almost 72 million. You know, we, we used to do like 40, you know, 27,000 claims or something like that. All we right. did almost 200,000. We'll continue this on the next segment. This is Locke Meredith, Legal Lines, with my very special guest, John Schroeder, this treasure for the entire state of Louisiana. Hi, I'm Mitchell Meredith. 
Injuries happen when you least expect them to, making your life more complicated. At Lock Meredith Sean Fagan & Associates, we know this and we strive to help each of our clients during these times. Whether you hire us at all, give us a call at 272-5555. Lock Meredith Sean Fagan & Associates has won for our clients over $175 million over the decades, but our greatest success is our clients who have chosen and trusted us to help them. Whether you hire us at all, give us a call, you've got nothing to lose. I'm lawyer Collins Lock Meredith. Trust is important when hiring an injury law firm. At Lock Meredith Sean Fagan & Associates, thousands have trusted us and gotten the results they deserved. Visit us at LockMeredith.com. Whether you hire us at all, give us a call, 272-5555. Welcome back to Legal Lines. I'm Locke Meredith. I'm pleased to have back on the show the treasurer for the entire state of Louisiana, John Schroeder. John, thank you. Let's dive back in. Yeah. So we're talking about people's money that you have possession of via your role as a treasurer. There's a, there's a way that they can easily get that money. One person got $2.3 million right. by just checking with you. How do they find you? How do they find this money? Well, the easiest way, we have a, a, a new website. Uh, it's lacashclaim.org. It's, and it's almost, for most people, paperless now. And that's right. one of the investments that we made. So we invested in tech, the technology so that you could go through the process very quickly and, in a lot of cases, get your check in less than 10 days. Now, <clears throat> there's always some complications, especially with heirs or... or Concern and you multiple have to claims. prove, yeah, and you have to prove who you are, and you have multiple heirs. So that's that's an issue. But for the most part, it's a very easy process, and uh, you can go to lacashclaim.org. And not only can you check for yourself, but a lot of this money belongs to uh, <clears throat> members of your family. The program who may have passed away, yeah. and you're entitled to. Well, it, look, right? the program is over 50 years old now. So, I mean, we find, uh, uh, people find their heirs all the time uh, that have money in this program because it never goes away. It stays there on paper, um, but the claim never goes away. So, we promote it. We advertise it. We have a website. We do TV promotions. You got we a phone were, number. I'll, I'll give it right now if that's okay. Yeah, certainly. The phone number folks can call is 1-888-925-4127. one 888 Nine two five four one two seven, or as you mentioned, the website is lacashclaim.org. Right, and you just go on there. Go there, folks, and you can, um, you know, you check yourself personally. But look, we have a lot of money for businesses too. There's probably over a hundred million dollars just for businesses. And last time I checked, about um, six months ago, we probably had about twelve hundred churches in the system. Nonprofits. I saw charities too. Charities. Pass money for the. The hospitals, we, Our Lady of the Lake and Baton Rouge General. Yeah, the Baton Rouge General is getting a nice check uh, in the next couple of days from us. But it's just a lot. I mean, I let me tell you, my, if, if I wasn't treasurer and you told me um, what part of the job that I want to do for the rest of my life, <laughs> it would be unclaimed Santa property. Santa Claus. <laughs> because, you know, and I could really expand that program, invest more in it. You could double the staff because, look, we only collect about 10 to 12 percent of the money we're supposed to. Say that again. That blows my mind. We only collect 10 to 12 percent of the money we're like supposed to. Which is like one dollar out of every 10 yeah. that should be in there. So it's really an education because the banks and the insurance companies and, and investment companies, you know, once those accounts go dormant by statute, by law. But how long does that have to be? Well, it's it? anywhere between a year to five years. Okay. They all sort of have different timelines. But, um, you know, it's a self-audit kind of thing. I mean, we don't have um, audit agents running around the state checking everybody, but we are starting to have some, some webinars where we're, we're investing some time. In, in, um, we had over 400 um, companies sign up early in the year where we explain the process and what the law is. And we're here to help. We've never fined anybody, right. you know, and I've had calls about that too. But we're here to help people, educate them. But, but really... The real goal is, I don't want this money. I want to give the money back to somebody. And the state doesn't get the money, well, right? Well, not Does anymore. Just sit in, yeah, there was, not I anymore. remember when John Kennedy... They used to US spend every dime of it, uh, meaning what, whatever wasn't returned was spent in the state general fund. But my first full two years, we did not have enough money in the last 90 days of each year. So we eventually got a constitutional amendment passed that created an unclaimed property trust fund. And now just the interest. I didn't know that was because of you. Congratulations. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So now the interest is spent in the state general fund. And it was a creative way to, to make money for the state without intruding on what I believe was the rights of the citizens of this state. So it's a win-win. 
we got to be more creative about that. I like I like these trust funds that we invest money and we allow the state to spend the investment. You know, we had a constitutional amendment that we were pushing that did, that failed because people didn't understand it. But Those they, amendments are kind of well, they are tricky. And I understand, yeah. and we have some and education to do. But these some of these trust funds were created through tobacco settlements and and offshore royalty payments, and they were put into accounts to keep the principal, invest, take the return and give the government to spend. That's what the legislature did, it's, it's very specific. So this isn't like tax dollars rolling in that we're rolling the dice and hoping to make money. That's not what that was at all, but that's something we'll talk about another day. So it's interesting because we talked about the kind of hats that you, you, you know, I describe your role as the banker for the state of Louisiana mm -hmm. and the investment advisor. Right. And so you take these trust funds and you invest those monies and the interest that's earned via the right. investments, the earnings, that the state gets, which helps us pay less taxes, God willing. Exactly. And then the money's there preserved, uh, doesn't go away for the claimants who have a legitimate right to it. Right. So the goal is not to lose the principal, right? <clears throat> Invest enough to get the biggest return that you can get. But our returns have been, as, as the whole market has, has um, decreased, so has our returns. And, sure. And, you know, recently we got in the, the big issue over BlackRock and where this money was invested. Uh, we, we basically moved about $800 million dollars. Um, from BlackRock um, accounts and move them to other places. You know, we have to pay more attention of, of where we're investing this money because not only um, do we have to be good stewards with the money, but I also believe we have to do a better job as government investing in our own state. And as we talk about um, bringing business to the state of Louisiana, if we as a state don't do a better job at investing in our own state, why is somebody outside Louisiana going to do that? And that all came to light. It's a good point. It all came to light after the Russia after Russia invaded Ukraine, when we had money locked up. Not a lot. We had a small percentage, <clears throat> but every every um, entity of, of the state, whether it was retirement or, or the treasury, um, that were investing money had some money locked up in 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 Russia, and now um, and what's going on in China now is making us pay more attention. Where, where is this money being invested? I think we need to better, do a better job in investing in home and in infrastructure in this state, in our own communities, because if we don't do it, nobody else is. Well, there's, there's two issues. That issue is extraordinarily important. And as you know, because you've made national headlines, ESG is basically the philosophy of BlackRock, what, $8 trillion in assets? It used to be right. 10. It used to be 10. They lost two. Um, and, and this whole global kind of concern about climate change and they're trying to control where the investments go. Explain to folks what this whole ESG stuff is. Yeah. Most people have no idea. No, they don't. And, and look, I, I said in national news yesterday that, uh, you know, my job as state treasurer is to educate the public. I, I was at a board meeting for the teacher's retirement system. I sit on eight out of the 13 retirement boards. My job as treasurer is to advise to give, to use my team. I and mean, we have our own version of a um, uh, Raymond James, a Smith Barney, right there at the Capitol. We manage over 60 billion in cash flow. We Say that again, 60 over 60, billion dollars. It's, it's about 64 billion plus. Um, we, we manage 16 or so billion in trust funds. So, but also my team, my investment team, there's five of them, they also sit on all these retirement boards. So we see this every day. And we see where companies like BlackRock are push, pushing a political agenda. In this case, it's called ESG short, or ESG short for, but it stands for Environmental Social Governance. And in this case, where Treasury is concerned, it's, it's using our money to invest in, right. in environmental things that maybe aren't contrary or good for Louisiana. Okay, economy. we'll continue this on the next segment. This is Locke Meredith with my special guest, John Schroeder, the Secretary of Sorry, the state treasurer for the entire state of Louisiana. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Sean Fagan of Locke Meredith, Sean Fagan & Associates. Open the phone book or look online. There are plenty of lawyers to choose from. And if you ask any of them, they'll agree that the vast majority of claims settle without ever having gone to trial. And I'll tell you, any lawyer can settle a claim. It's not hard to settle a claim, but it takes hard work to get a client what he or she deserves. At Lock Meredith, Sean Fagan Associates, we have a proven record of working hard for our clients. Whether you hire us at all, give us a call. Welcome back to Legal Lines. I'm Lock Meredith. I'm pleased to have on the show again, 
John Schroeder. He is the state treasurer for the entire state. He's basically the state's banker and investment advisor. John, yes. we were talking about ESG. Not a lot of folks know what it means. Could you explain it and kind of point out how the, the, the philosophy and the goals of BlackRock and some global folks was contrary to the goals of individuals in our state? Yeah, so very simply, and it's, it's, it's complicated, and as I said in the last segment, I'm, I'm trying to educate the public at this standpoint, and, and it's going to take some time, but we can't ignore the, this, what's going on, because you have these major global companies, I call them world companies, where they have bigger investments in China than they do in the United States of America, trying to dictate our environmental policy, our social policy, and our governing policies. And they're using their financial might to do that. But you know who they pound on the hardest? The little small states like Louisiana, our 4.6 million people. And they're coming after our industry, what, what puts food and, and dollars in the pockets that, that allow people to go to work and make a living and how they, you know, for generations have raised their families. And keeps our nation running. Keeps our nation Gotta running. Gotta have oil and gas. So they're, they're, so they're absolutely anti-fossil fuel. Um, and they're, they're, they're using their political might to, to force us out of that business. Um, whereas the rest of the world um, need it in a, in, a, in a capacity we can't even keep up with. So you got a world capacity growing, and then you have these world type companies who believe they want to force or, or they know what your habit is or should be and force that down your throat. I'm sorry, as an army veteran, I, Amen. I, I defended this country. I don't need some global com company whose interests are more outside this United States than inside forcing behavior on Louisianians. That's why I stepped in and I took $800 million out of that company and I put it in other, another company. Very similar uh, type investments. It's like hamburgers. You either eat at Sonic, uh, uh, McDonald's or Burger King. Well, I decided BlackRock was out and I will continue to do that whether it's a world bank like Citibank, Bank of America, doesn't matter. That's right, it's, because corporations yes. are now trying to implement this whole process it, called ESG again. If it's contrary to the Louisiana beliefs that, that, that I was elected to, 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 to serve and protect our Constitution, whether it's the Second Amendment or investments, that's what I do as state treasurer. Well, and the governor in the state of Florida just followed your lead. Yes. And they pulled out what, $2 billion? $2 billion. And I knew it was coming, you know, but because it takes time. It takes time. They made that announcement. We've been working on it for eight or nine months. But I didn't really tell anybody, you know, because it's part of my job. It's, it's part of my fiduciary Yeah, but not everybody was, did this. And, and it was brave of you, smart of you, loyal of you. It was you, the right thing to do. Right thing to do. And yeah. you were the tip of the spear. Right. And, and, it, and like I said, there's other options. And, and, and we have some work to do because the market needs to adjust. The market um, of, of, of markets that believe in free capital and, 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 and how this, the, the whole entrepreneurial spirit behind this country. So the market needs to adjust and take up the space where these big companies are going to leave some space. And, and that's what we're sort of working on. You know, I serve as national chair right now, the State Financial Office Foundation which was about just, just this past October. It's really an honor to be selected by your peers. I mean, the, the states we represent over $3 trillion. So it, um, it's, it's an honor to lead. But this is a fight that's just starting. Right. I, I hope you, um, you'll go be, be able to go to our website soon and see, see some video and some film that, uh, um, that will explain what ESG is in, in, a, in a comprehensive way so you understand it. We're on the full assault. You know, as an Army veteran, you know, f from years ago, we fought our um, enemies on foreign shores. I never thought I'd live the day where I watch corporate America, not all, but I've watched these world global type companies be our enemy in, 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 within our own borders so in this we, country. And most of them originated here. But we have to pay attention that we're not arming our en enemies. And one of the reasons I moved that money, because I, I was not going to allow for BlackRock to invest that money in places overseas, um, that uh, in countries that despise this United States. We have to do a better job at investing inside the shores of this country and inside the boundaries of this state. Because if, if we don't do it, 
nobody else will do. And, and you know, one of the other major things that I, that I push is, as the state treasurer, as the chairman of the state bond commission, is the whole finances and making sure we're spending within our means, refinance, refinancing our debt, just like you would do in your own space. And that's one of the new hats yes. that, that we needed to talk about. Well, and it's also... The state bond commission. Explain state, to folks what that is. Well, it's basically the bank for the state, and we issue debt. Um, not only just for the state, but every political subdivision in the state of Louisiana to borrow money has to come to the state to get approval. So, but on the same token, I, I have to educate them as well. When, when the opportunity exists where they can refinance their debt, we've probably saved this state close to, you know, between local, state, I don't know, $850 million over the life of their bonds. But it's a constant, You're constant refinancing thing. the debt for Refinancing me. debt. And uh, we want to make sure that the locals and the, and the local political subdivisions, because we're talking about either uh, local government, uh, fire departments, uh, water districts, you know, infrastructure needs. The, the, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big pot of money that's in, invested. And, and we, we, you know, if you haven't reinvested now or, or refinanced now, you probably missed the boat until the next time it comes around. So right. it's educate and take advantage of things just like I do in my own business. So all, 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 although the dollar's a lot bigger, we're talking about millions and billions versus... Concepts are the same. Yeah, the concepts are exactly the same. It's just dollars. It's just numbers. Well, let's point out also that... that the way the debt is financed is depending on your credit rating. Just like an individual, right. states have the credit ratings. Right. You've caused that to be improved. Well, we have improved our rating, but we can do better. And what are we right now? A double A? Yeah. And but, then a double A the, minus with one the, of but them? But the real story with the, with the rating agencies, getting back to ESG, the rating agencies are involved in that as well. Yeah. Wow. And, and they don't like what we do for a living is Louisiana. But Louisiana has never, ever not paid a dime. Not paid a dime. Uh, or not ever uh, reneged on a dime. Right. We paid every penny, and we don't. We haven't benefited from that because these um, rating agencies are so hooked up into their environmental and political beliefs, and they don't like how Louisiana uh, makes their money in the industry um, in the fossil fuel world. They use even that. though they need that to live. Absolutely, um, it's mindless. It's, but but they punish us for that. So that's something I'm working on right now. And, and believe it or not, the, the governor and I are on the same step, same page with that, and we're gonna we're gonna attack that real hard over the next quarter, uh, going into the to the next fiscal year, and uh, really attack these rated agencies and make them pay more attention on um, Louisiana does a good job at paying its bills, and uh, we will continue to do that uh, because why this is so important is the money we borrow, we can get at a cheaper rate. Right, it's a, a better loan, lower right. interest rate. You considering running for governor? I am. I am. Tell folks about your, your thought process. We only got a few seconds. Well, look, I, 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 I want a governor who's a CEO. I want, I want a CEO type. And I tell people, if you, if you want somebody that likes politics, I'm, I'm not that guy. But I do like the, the nuts and bolts of government. It's, a, it's all about the money. Um, and, and you know how it works. And I know how it works. John, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. This is Locke Meredith Legal Lines, John Schroeder, the treasurer for the entire state of Louisiana. Thank you for being with us.